This is the EWN Podcast Network. Welcome to Late Boomers, our podcast guide to creating your third act with style, power, and impact. Hi, I'm Kathy Worthington. And I'm Mary Elkins. Join us as we bring you conversations with successful entrepreneurs, entertainers, and people with vision who are making a difference in the world. Everyone has a story, and we'll take you along for the ride on each interview, recounting the journey our guests have taken to get where they are, inspiring you to create your own path to success. Let's get started. Kathy Worthington welcoming you to our Late Boomers podcast, where today we will be talking with motivational speaker and holistic wellness coach, T.K. Mitchell. And I'm Mary Elkins. I know we boomers can always use some good intel on how to stay healthy and fit, and we really want to hear this from T.K. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, TK, please tell our listeners a little bit about your background and how you came to found your company, which is called Sprout Your New Life. Actually, the company is called Lifestyle 120. Oh, okay. Let's get that right. Yeah, Lifestyle 120 is the name of the company and the motivational program, the inspirational program is called Sprout Your New Life. Ah. Excellent. Yes. So what led up to that for you? Well, it's, you know, it's just kind of a journey. I think one of the major journeys for me started after I began caring for my mother and overcoming my own health challenges naturopathically. And then at that same time, wondering what the future held after my 32 year public school teaching career. Ah. Yeah. So I I started searching like a lot of women are searching today um, for answers to like, what's next? And Mm -hmm. then I began thinking um, because the media really doesn't support this. So I I began thinking, is it possible for a middle aged woman to become more prosperous in every area of her life? And if so, what would be the secrets to her success? So, ah. yeah, so mm-hmm. I knew um, that I, I didn't want to retire the same way my colleagues and relatives had retired in the past. I I was certain that there was more important work for me to do to continue my life of service, but in a different way and had no idea what that was going to look like. So oh. I sort of blended my interest and all and went back to school to get health certified. After I don't like to use the word retirement, but after I graduated from my <laughs> I graduated from school, I, right, right. I like that. I and like so, that. You know, it's you kind know, of like a, what what grade was it that you must have? Well, um, a variety of grades. I had a wonderful opportunity to to be in education K through twelve. I I taught. Mm. I was in administration for a short period of time, and consulted for for a period of time. So a lot of different. Uh, opportunities for me, but I, I graduated from the language arts department at my high school. And I came from my special ed department before I transitioned to that, to that particular department. So a lot of wonderful opportunities to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Wonderful opportunities for me, I should say. And then, um, but it's interesting how your journey takes these interesting little curves and you're not really sure where you're being led, but I did have an interest in health. And so I went back to school to get health certified and then blended my love for teaching and wellness and mm. started my holistic coaching and motivational speaking business at the age of 62. That was years ago. Bravo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bravo. Yeah. yeah very well, I cool. wanted to inspire mature and seasoned women to step into their power and achieve mm-hmm. what was important to them. And I used my experiences and success to create the program I was telling you about, the comprehensive, uh, sustainable empowerment program for women called Sprout Your New Life, specifically designed to prepare courageous women for a beautiful second half. Oh, or third or fourth. 
<laughs> TK, you really fit into our messages for baby boomers. Would you mm -hmm. tell everyone about your blog and the community that you call 60 and Me? Yes. Well, you, I was invited um, to participate in 60 and Me. Uh, this is a a community that, well, the the owner of the community is Margaret Manning, and she's out of Switzerland. But I mean, her her message expands all over the world, which is something that really intrigued me. But so I write for them periodically, and those particular posts, I should say, or articles, are on my website. And it's all about inspiring women to be their best. And there's always a little spiritual. Um, underlying spiritual message in my posts because mm -hmm. that's what my program is about that's what i'm about and i believe with our uh with our wellness goals there's need there needs to be some sort of personal spiritual foundation in mm -hmm. order for us to move forward so i can mm -hmm. talk about that later if you want but yes the, yeah we oh, yeah, yeah, we'd love to hear that wonderful yes so what critical lifestyle practices should we commit to in order to enjoy a more fulfilling life? Give us a couple tips. Yeah, well, you know, um, let me, I'm thinking about the program itself. And from my perspective, what I have done, and I think a lot of women will be able to identify with this, is we've all transformed our lives over years and years and years. For me in particular, um, I've transformed mine up many, many times over the past decade. And in that time, what I have learned is in order to increase our chances of living a long, fulfilling life, and I think we all want that, we need to be focused on seven key lifestyle elements uh, and practice mm -hmm. those in order to grow and flow. Some of like, them might not be surprising to our listeners. I'll just go over them quickly, but then there's that yeah, spiritual component you? that we'll talk about. But first, we need to nourish our bodies, right? With fresh, wholesome, vitamin-rich meals, uh, making a conscious decision to avoid highly processed foods that's laden with fat, salt, sugar, and preservatives. That's the first thing. Everybody's going, yeah, yeah, so I, oh, I know yeah. that. Don't do it always, but that's what I know. Everybody's thinking, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the second one is establishing a regular fitness routine. And that's another one I think people shaking their head going, yes, we know. But I say regular, being committed. So our bodies were meant to move and devising a plan to move more will help to keep it working properly. Mm -hmm. The keep third, moving. yes, the third is getting proper sleep. And we all need to be well rested to accomplish our daily tasks. The fourth is the importance of a comfortable and inspiring living space that's free of clutter and toxicity. That one may be a little surprising to some, um, but we want mm -hmm. to make our surroundings conducive to our inner peace and creativity. So getting rid of all of the stuff we don't need to open up space um, to enjoy what's new, what's coming to us. That doesn't surprise me at all because I'm in the process of just starting to do it and I'm not very good at uh, decluttering. Yes. Yes. I'm terrible at it. I need help with it. But I think that's something we should all seek out, somebody to help us if we can't manage it. Yes, because I know the feeling when part of it gets out, you feel so much better. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with you 100%. But it's a hard yes. task. It's a hard task, and there are people to help that, um, you know, have, have created a business around that. Yeah, right. for sure, you can feel that um, that space opening up, and it opens us up mentally mm -hmm. and spiritually. And yeah. so that's the fourth item. And the fifth item is nurturing healthy and meaningful relationships, keeping in touch with those we care about. But even more than that, building new friendships. I think that's critical. Mm -hmm. um, the sixth one is generously giving of ourselves through community service. And the seventh is my favorite. It's 
this pursuing of our interest and our dreams, that's what keeps us relevant and passionate about life. So all of these, these lifestyle elements, I call them lifestyle components, will promote health and wellness and enable us to live a full life. And they're all intimately connected. For instance, if a woman wants to improve her overall health, she'll need to do more though than eat nutritious foods. See, the seven lifestyle components must be aligned in order to reap the benefits of optimal health. And so that's where I come, uh, that's, that's what gets us here at this particular point in the discussion, brings us to the secret sauce. Mm. And so I'm, I'm, I am absolutely certain, 100% certain that the seven lifestyle elements that I mentioned are, they're not going to be sustainable without the spiritual component. So mm-hmm. I believe in order to experience whole health and to fulfill the desires of the heart, a lifeline must be circulating through our everyday experiences. And this lifeline is an internal system of fundamental universal truths and is the essence of my messaging. Mm. I'm sure people are wondering, like, what could that be? What is that? Mm-hmm. Well, what is that? Yeah, it's yeah, love. I have a question about that. Yes. I wanted to ask you what role universal principles play in experiencing success. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Yes, be happy to. So this secret sauce consists of love and compassion. It's your thoughts and your words. It's accepting responsibility and honoring your commitment to the choices you make in life. It's trusting and believing. And it's having courage and passion, getting excited over and over again about the rest of your life. It's about expectations and planning and being open to becoming vibrant during this stage in our lives. And so I show women how to access this internal support system and apply it to daily living so they can fertilize their consciousness with this substance that will allow them to grow and grow and flow. Well, what about gratitude? I mean, yes, and gratitude. Yes, absolutely. It's all encompassed in that short messaging. I mean, there's so many of us trying to summarize most of it, basically, but gratitude is huge. Well, do you practice it every day? And every day. How, I mean, a lot of people don't even know how to practice it. Is it just saying thank you for the beautiful day or what do you, you think know, it is? Yeah, you know, I think it's more than that. I'm, I think it's it's internalizing it and you can internalize it through practice. But my practice is when I first wake up in the morning is to is to express gratitude for the day, you know, Mm -hmm. thank you for the day. Uh, This is the day that spirit has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, whatever your message is for yourself and, but that can become rote. Mm -hmm. So I really think that. So mix it up a little bit. Mix it up a little bit. But in your One day you're thankful for your family and another day you're thankful for the palm tree outside the window. Yes. That's kind of what I do. I kind of try. Yes. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, well, you know, think of extra things sometimes. Extra things. I, yeah. I, would, I would like to have women think about it in terms of being natural and open to it so that it's not just the morning that you're expressing gratitude throughout the entire day. So when you go out for your walk, it's not that you're saying, oh, it's such a beautiful day or look at those beautiful flowers. It's like just being grateful for nature. I mean, mm. it's just an expression it's in your heart. Your heart is so full of the gratitude. It's not so much listing all the things that you're grateful for, but just being grateful for the life that you're living. Yeah. And all this. Yeah. I love what you said about becoming open, uh, being open to becoming vibrant. Yes. Open that to is really vibrant. a good concept. Yes. And really yeah, what it boils yeah. down to, too, Kathy, is being open to being open. <laughs> Exactly. To be open. Oh, that's so important because so many of us have shut down and we're, we're because of what goes on in society and and it's important to be open and open to becoming and open 
to becoming your best self. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned earlier um, about sleep being really important. Have yeah. you found some natural drug-free solutions so you can enjoy restorative sleep? Sometimes we just sleep on a certain level. We're mm -hmm. kind of awake, but not sleeping. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. What would you well, say to that? I have some tips for that right now. Um, okay. I say, Love it. Um, what seems to help people is to shut off your electrical, your, your, your iPhone and your computer at least an hour or so before you know you're getting ready to go to bed. Say you're going to bed at 10, then shut everything off by 8.30 or 9. That's, that's hard for folks. But mm -hmm. that sort of overstimulation can cause mm -hmm. your mind to be, you know, co constantly in motion and you want to relax. So in place of that, what you could do is if people are having trouble uh, leading up to a restful night is perhaps take a nice warm bath. Um, you've already shut off your computer and they may listen to some soft music mm -hmm. or, and you could read a passage from one of your favorite inspirational books mm -hmm. just to get you into the mode of relaxation and then do your, your uh, inner inner breath, your breathing, your, um, yeah, I would say, you know, you're practicing your breath work, I would hope throughout the day, but in the evening you can sit and relax. I'm not saying necessarily meditation, but sit and relax and focus on your breathing. And this is a time to be grateful for all the wonderful things that transpired during the day, mm. those kinds mm -hmm. of things. But then one thing that's very, very important, and I'll get back to nutrition, is to eat your last meal a few hours before bedtime. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want that in your system to keep you awake in the evening. So, True. yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, that's um, a helpful. lot of people now are, are they're practicing that intermittent fasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so much advocating that. I'm just saying, you know, eat eat your meals, you know, your breakfast, your lunch, your snacks, but have a real light supper and have it mm -hmm. three or four hours before you go to bed. And if, if you're feeling a little hungry, then have a nice cup of tea, you know, after your bath. Chamomile. Reading. Say what now? <laughs> yeah. A chamomile, yeah, chamomile tea chamomile. that'll help yes, you sleep. Yes. Chamomile. Chamomile tea is wonderful for relaxation for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your favorite herb tea for sure. Not caffeine. Because caffeine no. keeps us <laughs> keeps us buzzed. Oh, have a lovely voice. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you fall asleep, you, you'll wake up later right, if you right, have right. caffeine. So oh, no. um, alcohol to too keeps you awake. Mm -hmm. Soda oh. pop, you know, because it's yeah, it's oh, just sugar. sugar. Mm -hmm. yeah, anything with sugar. So well, those are some basic tips. Yeah. Now, after we've had all this wonderful sleep, I know you have tips for how we can experience more energy than we can handle mm. and how mm -hmm. do we crush those afternoon commitments when we might be feeling yeah, a little right. bit yeah <laughs> well you know my my program sprout your new life gets into that and it's it's not really so much an easy fix i mean because what the research says that in order to make uh transformational changes you need about five or six months of continuous mm -hmm. commitment it's not just mm -hmm. going to happen overnight Mm -hmm. Um. yeah so it, it's a mindset um, you have to know exactly what you want to accomplish and set your mind to it and not deviate I think mm -hmm. that's that's the real general yeah that's just so general but there are a lot of specifics like I say that I go through in my program but what gets me up see in the morning to do what I'm doing is my commitment to helping women overcome their limited mindsets so they can flourish in their golden years. So that's my charge. So I think everybody has to have a charge. You know, that's what we talked about the mm -hmm. purpose in the seven components. You need to have mm -hmm. that purpose. Sometimes it's hard to get to the purpose. Like, hmm, wonder what my purpose is. You know, yeah. I'm tired. I don't know. And so there's a process to go through that. 
and like I said, the program. And just having the purpose is going to give you more energy automatically, right? Yes, absolutely. we we'll give you more energy, yes. Give As us you... a hint on finding purpose. On finding purpose? Well, I think there's a process that you have to go through. And the process generally comes with intention. And so when you are by yourself or when you're out walking in nature and you've got your mindset on what's my next step. See, a lot of people don't have their mindset on that. They're walking and they're appreciating that and appreciating their children, their grandchildren, but they haven't really decided that I want to do something more. Once they start thinking about that, then their mind won't be able to shut off. And I would say, once you think about it, sit down with yourself daily and start writing, journaling about, now, what is it that I really love to do? What is it? How, how can I contribute to society in a major way? Um, what is it that's on my heart that I would like to pursue? And so that will probably get you set up mentally uh, to move in that direction. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's challenging initially, but I think that it's, it's very possible to start there with trying to figure out what it is that you want to do and be open to what you are, what's being downloaded to you um, from spirit and, mm -hmm. and then move from there. Um, but, you know, I, I just want to say that I had to go through that transition myself. Um, so, yeah. It, it was, it was very, very interesting. Um, I, I guess I just have to say that, um, if, if I have time to talk about this, I'd love to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so if we're taking a deep dive into how to release limiting beliefs and reclaim your confidence, purpose, and power, I know this may sound sort of cliche, but it's a matter of like getting out of your own way. And by that, I mean, it's important to have goals and intentions, but because we don't know everything, we must be open to the higher plan. And so getting out of our way means being flexible and patient, resilient mm -hmm. and open to possibilities that cross our paths. And that will lead us to more magnificent opportunities. Now, we practice, we can practice being receptive by spending sacred time with ourselves, like I'd mentioned before, which includes, you know, reflection time and establishing a consistent spiritual practice and spending time in nature. But getting out of our way also means releasing our view of perfectionism <laughs> and to stop shooting on ourselves, as I always say, <laughs> being open <laughs> to a journey of learning and growing. Now, see, at, here, here's, Here's an example. So after graduating from my teaching career, I mm -hmm. thought, because that's all I knew, I thought my second half was about doing more of the same. Mm -hmm. So initially what I did is considered a path that was safe and comfortable. What, what I had already known, for example, I, I started tutoring at the adult education center in my local community college. And while this is a great way to give back, it was not right for me. It was not the right fit. And then one of my colleagues and I explored the idea of starting our own reading clinic. We were teaching reading <laughs> and that idea fizzled. And I even considered, well, what, what would I want to do at this point? Consider getting my PhD in curriculum oh. and instruction, you know, so I could develop programs for student teachers. You know, it's all that same plan. So mm -hmm. I encountered major resistance everywhere with the, mm. all of those. Because you just didn't feel it was in alignment. No, it you. was not in alignment. And I, it, it was very interesting how I just kind of, a wall was just placed in front of me and I couldn't go any further. But looking back, I realized now that I was being divinely guided. Those initial ideas were too much of the same thing. So in my second half, I discovered what I was supposed to do is use my strengths and talents in a 
different way, to do a new thing. So long story short, of course, I, I went through um, the process of, of exploring and meditating on the meaning of the signs that, that the universe was placing on my path. And what I wound up doing is combining my love of teaching, which will never, never go away, uh, my mm -hmm. lifelong passion for health and wellness, mm -hmm. and my experience developing curriculum, while at the same time strengthen a deeper relationship with spirit. So what I'm doing now is a manifestation of all of that. I love right. that. Yeah, I so love we that. have to allow ourselves to grow beyond, not do the same thing. We need to, you mm -hmm. know, explore. Yeah. yeah well, so it, talking about health and wellness, yes. let's talk about sugar because I love my chocolate chip cookies. And what do mm. you recommend for people who are drowning in sugar? People, mm. who, every meal they have has tons of sugar and salt yeah. in it. And yeah. how do you rescue those people? Well, you know, I'm not really sure they realize what it is that they're eating. I know they probably want to release a lot of the sugar, but they're not really sure how to do it. And I, I love cooking. And, and I've got, from my health, my own personal health journey, found out that I was, um, had some food allergies that were really messing me around. I tell you, when I was going through menopause, found out a lot of things about my own health that I was able to, to reverse. But in that process, I had to start cooking differently, preparing my food differently. I thought I was eating healthily, but um, there was some improvement that needed to be made. So I've got a lot of recipes on my, on my um, website. So oh. back to your question though, I, you're able to substitute that. I mean, if you, Mm -hmm. A real simple answer would be to take a look at what's on your plate, because we know the sugar is addicting. That's the issue. Yeah. So the more chocolate Very. cake you eat, the more you want. But you uh -huh. cut back after two weeks or so, you start to feel different. Your taste buds change. But I'm not saying that you should give give up your sweet tooth. No, there are other ways to get it. And one of my favorite is through fruit, like berries. Now, some mm -hmm. fruit. There's a lot of sugar in it. So, you know, we mm -hmm. eat just a little bit of that. But you can sprinkle berries on your salads, on your breakfast uh, cereal. Um, there's a lot of ways to, to reduce sugar that way. What about and honey? Then, mm -hmm. What about honey? Honey is honey, sugar. Yeah, honey is so good, isn't it? Oh, I just love honey. Honey <laughs> is loaded with sugar. Oh, my gosh. It it's is. just pure sugar. It's, it's just pure, pure sugar. sugar. But it's you know, not speaking, on, it's not on my eating plan. No. Oh my gosh! And I you know, honey. You know, I I used to love honey, but then when I released it, and then I tried to reintroduce maybe a teaspoon, my head I could feel it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I was off of you know. Yeah, I'm on basically a no sugar yeah. plan. But you don't really recommend for our our listeners. I, I wrote yeah. a book called Sip the Garden: Fun, Easy Drinks for a Healthier Family, and it was my answer to how to reduce uh, your intake of sugar, all those sugar beverages, all those sugary beverages. So oh, oh, yeah. we'll help Awful. with that. Killer. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of um, cutting back, but not out and knowing what to substitute for. Now, there are some substitutes for sugar and, mm -hmm. you know, all the ones that are out, they're just really not good for you. Like, they're chemicals. You know, yeah, the chemicals. But, but they but, also keep you wanting sweet things in they, your mouth. They do. They That's do. True. And right. some of them are much sweeter than sugar. Yes. Yeah. So they're yeah. not good either. Yeah. But so you know, there what about but there's so many people out there who are still working, boomers who are still working. Mm -hmm. They don't have time to cook, to look at their diet. They go and they grab a I don't know, a chicken pot pie and a yeah. piece of cake and ice cream and Oh, I know. Well, part of that is is to I guess it's, it's stressful eating. Ah, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, that's, you know, to reduce your stress because they're stressed. And so right. in order for this to work, though, you have to, you have to do some work. And I you mean, you have, have to plan ahead. You have to plan ahead, prepare your meals in advance and keep your refrigerator full of, you know, items that you can take to work, your lunch and, you know, your pre-made mm -hmm. salads that will last you four or five days. So that when you come mm -hmm. home, not like, oh, I don't have anything. I'm just going to go and grab this. Well, you have that, but I was going to mm -hmm. say my, one of my favorite, well, it, it's still sugar, but one of my favorite 
less sugar, <laughs> reduced sugar <laughs> and for baking is dates because dates are good for you. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, they do have sugar, but see the difference in a date um, in your drink or a date as your dessert, one date, is that <laughs> it has fiber. Yeah, it has fiber. So you can eat one. Yeah, oh, you can eat no. one. Yes, you can eat one, you can nibble on one with your, with your tea. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right, but I, I bake quite a bit and I make a lot of raw goodies and that's one of the basics in my raw goodies is a date nut crust for my pie. Oh. And mm -hmm. then then I'll have, you know, the um the fruit like the berry filling. And you really don't have to have that. That sounds yummy on coming it over. Does. So it yeah does, oh, it does on a different great. on a different subject away from sugar now. Yes. Um give give our boomers some tips on how to stop negative mind chatter mm. from sabotaging our dreams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's, that? a tough that's a different that's a tough one. Yeah. I think uh, just as a quick answer, uh, the, what they need to realize is that they are enough mm. uh -huh. the way they are. And a lot of people try to compare themselves with others. Uh, you are a unique individual um, here to express your gifts and talents and you not look at someone else and their journey and what they're doing and compare yourself to them. You have your own life goals and dreams and things that you should bring forth to the world. But yeah, that negative mind chatter, you know, it. I had trouble with that initially myself, especially even though I taught school for many, many years and, you know, you're in front of this huge group of kids, you know, you've got 35, maybe more kids or, or presenting something at, with your, to your faculty or making presentations in general. That's the subject matter was comfortable with, but still everybody sort of gets butterflies when they're speaking to a large audience. Mm -hmm. And so what helped me get over what you're talking about is to know that it's not all about me. Right. It's not all about yourself so that you realize that whatever your plan is or whatever your purpose is, it's not going to be all about you getting that out of it helps. I mean, that helped me 90%. That's, that's, I'm standing that's, here that's talking. really important. It's really important. Yeah. It's not yeah. about, yeah, it's not about yeah. me. Yeah, and it's about who I'm speaking to. And talk about service and and the and blending your passion with service. If you can blend the passion and the service, the passion, mm -hmm. the purpose, and the service. Now, talking about springing out of bed <laughs> in the morning, you would just get up. Oh, I think I'll get about eight, nine, ten o'clock. No, you'll be up at five thirty or six because you have blended those. It would be wonderful to blend those three passion, service, and purpose. Yes. And how you do, I know a lot of people are volunteering now and because they want to give back. And that's a beautiful thing. But I would like for them to think about why are you giving back in this way? To the, mm. the why. Ask the whys. Why are you pursuing this? Well, it's because I, I want to get out of the house. I want to be able to, you know, commit to the people in my community and give back and help them. And like I said, it's just wonderful. But is it really what you're supposed to be doing? If you can't answer the why, then you need to sit with that journal. I said, why am I doing this? So ask your whys about your purpose, um, your passions and your service. The big why. Perfect. So that, and, and what do you tell your followers about how they could wake up every morning and like what they see in the mirror? Oh, yeah. We're and that's all so guilty of like, oh, oh yes. I hate this picture of me or, oh, I don't like how I look. And how yeah. do I get, you look in the mirror and say, how did I get this old? Yeah, yeah exactly. How did I get those bags under my eyes? I, how did that happen? This is my mother's face. It's not yeah. my <laughs> face. Self-critical. Yeah. I know it. I know it. It's self-critical. Um, it goes back to those spiritual principles that I mentioned earlier, 
um, that I tried to sort of summarize all of them, but it goes back to learning how to love yourself as you are, where you are at this stage in your life. But you get beyond that, but they said it, it's hard to express all of that in a short period of time in a program, but that's all in the, in my Sprout Your New Life curriculum. But yes, mm -hmm. got to be able to look in the mirror and say, good morning, you beautiful, wonderful person. And I am so joyful that this day is happy, this beautiful day ahead of me, that I can do all these wonderful things for myself and for others. And let's get started because we've got a great That's day great. ahead of us. I mean, it's, but it's hard. You, you can say it, but do you really mean it? It has to be from your heart. No, people That's can say right. it. But and you know what Mel Robbins, I don't know if you're acquainted with Mel yes, Robbins, yes, her podcast. Yes. She tells people on her podcast, high five yourself in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Because if you high five yourself the first minute that you're in the bathroom, say, mm -hmm. um, she said, you can't do it without a smile on your face. Yeah, It like yes. changes your mood. 100% like instantly. So yeah. I tried it a few times and then I forget to do it. But yeah. any little trick like that a little trick. is great. Because you're going to laugh at yourself when yeah. you do this. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like so I said, stupid. you're standing in the mirror yeah, and, you're, and you're looking at it and saying, good morning, you beautiful doll. I mean, you're yeah. going to like, I, that's, I love that too. I think I even like it's that like, better. Yeah. I like exactly. that better. Oh. I say that to my dog every morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't accomplish the same thing, Mary, unfortunately. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we know the dog is beautiful, but we, you have to believe you're beautiful too. Yeah. Beautiful doll, D O L L. Yeah. Be beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Beautiful person. Absolutely. Yeah. TK, what would you like our audience to have as a takeaway today? And, and how would you like them to reach out to you? Oh, thanks for asking me. Yes, I. I want our mature and seasoned women to know that they can overcome current challenges, reinvent themselves, and evolve into the most amazing and dynamic individuals they were meant to be and have fun doing it. Now, if my message resonated with our audience today, I invite them to visit my website, lifestyle120.com, and sign up for my complimentary newsletter to get inspiration, wellness tips, recipes, and more. And I would encourage people to also uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, quite a few inspirational videos there, and follow me on social media. I'm active on, besides uh, besides um, my we're talking about YouTube, besides that, I'm active on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And additionally, I, um, let them know too that a transformational journey requires guidance and support. So if you're ready to plant the seed for your future, check out our Sprout Your New Life program. It's a life affirming program that can help nourish, transform, and position you to flourish in your second half. Mm, that's great. And Yay. Something, and something exciting is coming up in December. Um, a, a wonderful offering for people. So if they sign up, they'll, they'll see that. In, in the mailing, something's coming up in December that will hopefully position them to make 2025 the most exciting, the most intentional year, I should say, yeah. ever. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much, TK. Well, thank you. Thank our you, guest, Mary. Thank you. Our guest today on Late Boomers has been TK Mitchell, holistic wellness coach, motivational speaker, and a woman with great heart. We hope all you boomers are motivated to start something new today. Thanks again. And we want to thank our listeners for subscribing to our podcast and checking us out on YouTube and recommending us to your friends. We appreciate you so much. We'd love to have you give us a five-star review. And we want to hear about your experiences with late boomers and what gets you inspired. We're on Instagram at I am Kathy Worthington and at I am Mary Elkins and at Late Boomers. Thank you for listening and be sure to listen next week to our Late Boomers podcast when we feature Ramona Gailey as our guest. She's the, she's the founder of Alignment Circle and is a vibrational mentor. And if you're not sure what that is, tune in to Late Boomers and find out. 
Thanks again to TK Mitchell. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Late Boomers, the podcast that is your guide to creating a third act with style, power, and impact. Please visit our website and get in touch with us at lateboomers.biz. If you would like to listen to or download other episodes of Late Boomers, go to ewnpodcastnetwork.com. This podcast is also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and most other major podcast sites. We hope you make use of the wisdom you've gained here and that you enjoy a successful third act with your own style, power, and impact.